Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop, back again. Not with uh, tales of pirate radio or anything, but what well, to do with pirate radio. Back in the 60s, um, people often ask me what it was like back in those days when you had Radio Caroline, Radio London, you know, Swinging Radio England, Laser, you had all these pirate stations. Um, people just sort of want to know a little bit about it. it radio was totally different then. You know, now you've got your FM stations and my son said to me, I think I mentioned this before, he said, whatever FM station I'm listening to as I drive along, I can change around. He said, you wouldn't know one from another. You know, they all sound the same. Probably because they're, most of them are owned by the same company, I believe. Uh, I mean, don't quote me on that, but you know, I think there's only a couple of companies out there, aren't there, that sort of own the lot. So they're not going to be, <laughs> not going to be very different, are they? Um, going back to the 60s, what we had, I mean, I was a teenager, okay, so I liked Radio Luxembourg, obviously, that's all we had. There, before the Pirates, there was Radio Luxembourg, um, there was, what was there? There was the BBC Light Programme, that was okay, it was light entertainment, light music, you know, nothing, no sort of rock or pop or anything, it was just light entertainment. Um, the third programme, which was classical music, which was excellent if that's what you want, you know. BBC Home Service, which was news and drama and plays and all that stuff. Uh, what else was there? There wasn't local, there were no local stuff at all um, back in those days. So, you know, no commercial radio. So teenagers like me had nothing to listen to. You know, we were kind of left out. And of course, when the pirates came along, you know, well, I remember first tuning into Radio London I thought, wow, this is it. This is unbelievable, you know. And Caroline and the rest of them. This was something for the, for us as teenagers, something that we've never had before. I remember driving along at, at one time, listening to Radio Luxembourg. Luxembourg was in the evening. OK, you couldn't get it very well in the day because it's you know, Luxembourg is a long way away. Um, and with what with the propagation, it was good at night, but not in the daytime. I remember driving along. Uh, I had this girlfriend of mine next to me in the car and they're advertising Jurex on Radio Luxembourg. I thought, I thought wow, this is different. Yeah, you don't get that sort of thing on BBC. <laughs> well, of course, they don't have advert. I've got some notes here. But, um, you know, Emperor Roscoe and all that, that was terrific on Luxembourg. But then, of course, the ships came along in the North Sea and that really did change stuff because you could listen to them in the daytime. Uh, you know, the, the, the ground wave, they had the vertical air, was the ground wave nicely covered, certainly where I am, uh, you know, down the south coast here, um, and of course the east coast, uh, you know, being on the North Sea. So it was a good signal. Uh, you know, transistor radio, perfectly good signal, which was great. You know, people would take their radios down the beach. Wherever you went, there was someone with a transistor radio. Um, I remember, you know, when I lived at home, my mother had a transistor radio on the kitchen windowsill. All mothers did. That's what they did in the kitchen. They had a transistor radio on the windowsill. And uh, I was quite surprised. I, I got in one day and she's listening to Radio Caroline. <laughs> and I said to her, what happened to the, you know, the BBC Light programme? Oh, I prefer this. And that was my mother. I don't know how old she was then, but, um, you know, and I thought, oh, this is, this is good. It's cool. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say cool now. I'm too old. But uh, in fact, we invented the word. Well, no, we, we started using the word cool. And uh, now I'm told by my grandkids, I'm too old to say cool. Oh, no, coolio it was. I started saying coolio. You can't say that, Granddad. Got my notes here, look. And, uh, yeah, Caroline, Radio London. I always preferred London. The DJs, uh, unlike these days, it's all sort of plastic, isn't it? It's all done by the book. Well, it is, literally. The DJs back then... They weren't just DJs, they were entertainers. Um, Kenny Everett on Radio London was fantastic. You know, he, he, it wasn't just putting on records, which is what they seem to do now. Well, it's not records now, is it? It's whatever it is, computer. But, um, you know, they weren't just putting on records as they do now, they're just playing music as they do now. I know there's a bit of chat, there's phone calls and, uh, Oh, hello, Mrs. Smith. Yeah, you lost some weight. Yeah, I've lost three stone. I mean, no one's really interested in that. Well, perhaps some people are, but I'm not. I certainly wasn't as a teenager. I wanted to listen to the music and and have a bit of entertainment. 
I remember um, it was 1st of April on Radio London and the weather forecast chap said something along the lines of uh, going to be a lot of rain over London today, uh, over the city, except for one or two areas where there'll be a heat wave. And of course you're left thinking, yeah, what's he on about? And then he said something about the southeast of the country will be, uh, it's going to be really beautiful weather all over, absolutely you know, high temperatures and all this, apart from one or two spot, spots where there will be heavy snow. <laughs> you know, you think, hang on a minute, what's going on? It was fun. I think that's the difference. It was fun radio back in those days. You know, you knew, you, you felt that you were part of the radio station and not just some removed person listening to it. You know, the, you, you felt that you got to know the DJs. You know, you knew them almost personally. Um, that's the difference between then and now. I think if anyone ever said, what is the difference? That is it. I mean, obviously, you know, they played good music then. They're playing good music now. You don't get me wrong, I, I like a lot of today's stuff. I like Ellie Goulding and uh, you know stuff like that, Paloma Faith, you know, I like all this stuff. But it's it's the, the DJs or whatever they are now, they're just, I don't know, they, they just sit there reading a script, you know? Whereas back then it was, well, it was fun radio. Of course, the BBC weren't happy and they kind of colluded with the government to get rid of the pirates, which was a bit naughty. I mean, surely if you've got competition, the way to deal with your competition is to be better than them, isn't it? Not to go and close them down so you can carry on being no good at all, <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, I, I restore radios. If I've got a competition, well, I don't go and try and close them down. You know, I try to do a better job than they do at a better price. That way I win, you know? Had, I mean, the BBC with their resources, you know, they could have opened a, a radio station um, that would have just wiped the pirates off the map if they'd done it properly. You know, they were land-based, the BBC. They, you know, it was legal, so they didn't have to hide from people. <laughs> you know, you know, they had the aerials, they had the transmitters, they had everything. The studios, they could really have just wiped the pirates off the map, but there we are. The nautical map, that is. It's a shame. I mean, Radio 1, I remember the day Radio 1 started. There was Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3 and Radio 4. And you know, Tony Blackburn, what, what was that? I forget the first record. Oh, yeah, I woke up one morning half asleep, you know, or my blankets in a heap. That was great. Flowers in the rain with it or something. Um, by the move, I think. I'm probably wrong. Yeah, that was great. We thought, oh, this sounds all right. And of course, it was a really good signal because it was land based, you know, they, they weren't having to bob around on the waves out at sea. Uh, but it's soon within, within an hour. Sort of in the this was in the radio uh, and TV workshop where I was at the time. We all listened to the the, you know, the day day one of Radio One. Within an hour, we're sort of looking at each other like this is no good. People are shaking their heads. Well, oh, no, no, no. People are tuning back into Caroline in London. You know they would have done anyway, but um, you know because they were loyal to the pirates. But I don't, and the name I remember people saying Radio One. It's, didn't have an imagination. Couldn't they come up with a decent name for the radio station? You know, Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3 and 4. We've now got Radio 5, haven't we, and stuff. Well, we had the BBC World Service back in those days, of course, on medium wave. But um, Radio 1, you know, you'd think they could come out with something, you know, to, I don't know, a bit better for the teenagers, like, like I was. Yeah, Radio 1. But there we are. And, of course, uh, on Radio 1, the DJ would say, right, we've now got the latest one from the Beatles, whatever, you know, I, I want to hold your hand by the Beatles, played by the NDO, NDO, the Northern Dance Orchestra. Well, teenagers wanted to listen to the Beatles. I mean, I was into the Stones, but there we are. But they wanted to listen to the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the Who, not the Northern Dance Orchestra, doing a kind of copy of, you know, to, today's, as was today's pop music. Uh, I mean, with all due respect to the Northern Dance Orchestra, they were probably very good at what they did. But, you know, imagine today, you know, the, the, the DJ said, right, here's one by Green Day, uh, played by the Northern Dance Orchestra. I mean, people would turn the radio off, which is exactly what people did. What it was, was needle time, what they called needle time. Um, basically, you know, the BBC had to pay copyright to the artists, you know, to the groups, the band, they had to pay a copyright. So... 
they had what they called needle time, which was the amount of time they were playing records. You know, the amount of time the needle, or more correctly, the stylus, was on the record. So they could only play so many hours of records per day uh, because you know, they, they couldn't afford the copyright or whatever. That's what I heard anyway. That's true. I mean, there is, there or was needle time. Whereas the pirates, they could sit there playing records 24 hours a day, which they did. All sorts of records. And the argument, well, the BBC all said, oh, well, they're not paying copyright. That's not fair on the artists. Well, it was fair on the artists because I remember some of them being interviewed, you know, uh, members of bands and rock and roll groups and that. They were saying, they're playing our records. You know, which is great, it's getting our records out to millions of listeners and they're going to, the people are buying our records. They get the copyright from the sales of the records. Just because the ship wasn't paying the copyright, that didn't matter. You know, that, that wasn't a problem. The ship was pushing out their records to millions of listeners. Then everyone's running downtown and buying them. <laughs> so, you know, it worked really well. I mean, I did feel sorry for the BBC. They, they, they couldn't afford this... Uh, copyright business they were stuck with their needle time obviously some of the attraction to yeah about listening to the pirate stations is that they were in a ship out in the north sea they're called pirates and yeah that they it was not legal and stuff or whatever and yeah that made it exciting when you're a teenager that's exciting um i remember in rough seas yeah the, the one dj i was listening and he said i've just put a two bob bit on top of the arm you know, the record player, the arm that goes... I mean, I'm, I'm saying all this because a lot of youngsters watch these videos as well. You might think, what's a record player? What's an arm? What's a two-pod bit? <laughs> it's one of the, a coin, you know, a two-shilling piece was a coin. Or even a half-crown piece, which was bigger and heavier. Stick that on the arm so that the stylus wouldn't jump across the grooves of the record as the ship's doing this. You know, it slides back and forth over the record. So, uh, yeah, that made it all more... I don't know, more entertaining, more fun, more real, I suppose. It wasn't plastic, it was real. Um, a one DJ, he said, uh, we've got rough seas for the technically minded of you listening. Uh, the modulation transformers just slid across the floor. So a modulation transformer, part of the transmitter, you know, probably a big thing, be heavy sort of iron transformer. And it actually slid across the floor, the deck or whatever it was. Um, <clears throat> You know, and that made it, uh, especially for those of us that were, you know, like radio and TV engineers, you know, we, we knew what the mod tranny was and it was, uh, you know, we just pictured it with its cables and stuff and thousands of volts on it. Brilliant. It was, yeah, as I said, it was fun. Of course, we did have local, you know, land-based pirates. Um, you know, I mean, I, I know many, not me, of course, I know many people that, you know, transmitted on medium wave, their own pirate stations. There were one or two that uh, were, they, they were too serious. You know, it was, I don't know, they, they wanted to be professional. And they wanted to be so professional. You know, these were pirate stations I used to listen to down here on the south coast. Yeah, one or two was, wanted to be so professional that they were more like the BBC. It was more like Radio 1. You know, it, it didn't work. Well, not for me, at least. Uh, I liked the ones where <clears throat> if things would go wrong. They'd suddenly go off the air, then come back on the air. And you think, hello, what's going on there? Trouble with the transmitter, you know, aerials come down. <laughs> GPO have turned up, which is GPO used to bust the pirates in those days. Especially if you heard suddenly halfway through a record, the transmissions are cut. Hello, the GPO have arrived. <laughs> but sometimes they come back on again. It was just a fault, you know, something had blown up or <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was good fun. Yeah, as I say, one or two of the land-based pirates, though, they they were too serious, trying to be too professional, and, it, you know, they played the right music, but it just didn't work. Um, and I think, I think with the BBC, you know, when something used to go wrong, it, it was, it was good. You know, it made them human. You know, when it's all, I don't know, when everything's working properly and each record is faded in and out and the DJ, there's no gaps, it's all done properly. It's not human, it's, it's all plastic. I keep using that word plastic. It's the best word I can think of. Or, or let's go to cardboard. You know, the DJs were like cardboard cutouts. I remember in one chap's bedroom, had this big transmitter fired up, you know, we're on the air. And the aerial wire went up, so you 
past the curtains and out of the window, and the curtains caught fire. <laughs> yeah, this is he lived with, with his parents, and uh, this was his, you know, he set fire to his mother's curtains in the bedroom. He was trying to put the curtains out, there's flames going up to the ceiling. But we stayed on the air. Actually, well, they did, I didn't, obviously. I was, wouldn't get involved in anything like that. Of course, I got involved. What am I saying? If you want a taste of what it was like, do you know there's been a load of internet radio stations over the years, you know, calling themselves various things, um, you know, from the old days. If you want a taste of what Radio London, at least, was really like, go on the internet, um, wonderful Radio London 266. You've got to have the 266 on the end. Just type that in, wonderful Radio London 266. They don't seem to have DJs, but they've got the music, obviously. They've got news uh, snippets from those days, the 60s. Um, I've only listened to it for the last couple of days. There's Kenny Everett I've heard on there doing you know, funny bits and pieces. Uh, all sorts on there. So it's not just playing 60s music. You know, They've got all the jingles. I mean, I've got jingles and stuff on the computer. I, I daren't play them here. It would have been great in, on the video you know, to pop a jingle in here and there. Wonderful Radio London, you know, all that stuff. But um, what was it, Caroline? Back in time on the Sound of the Nation. It's a Caroline flashback. <laughs> I've got all those jingles. But, well, as most people have, you know, they're, they're all over the internet. But, of course, if I put them on here, we're back with that copyright issue and uh, probably get told off by YouTube <laughs> or whatever. But, yeah, have a listen. Wonderful Radio London 266. Just going back to Radio Luxembourg for a minute. I don't know how true this is. But apparently the record companies, you know, they, they send out records to radio stations, OK? Uh, you know, the latest Beatles or Stones one, they, they'd send them out to the radio stations. You know, we wouldn't charge them. And they used to send them out to Luxembourg. And the BBC or the government, or somehow they got that stopped. Uh, I don't suppose Luxembourg cared. You know, they, they get their own copies, you know, they go and buy their own. But uh, you know, I think that was another sort of pathetic underhand thing you know, to, to try and... I don't know, to try and get at Radio Luxembourg. As I said earlier, you know, surely if you've got competition, the way to beat the competition is to be better than them. But uh, I don't know, the government, the BBC, they, they didn't think that was... Well, they probably didn't know how to. They just, well, they didn't. The thing is, in those days with the BBC, it was a lot of old boys, wasn't it? Sitting in an office with their pipes, oh, and I've all these pirates, oh no, we'll have Radio 1. <laughs> Radio 1, it just didn't work. But... Uh, it was all old school stuff. You know, all these old boys with their pipes and their ties sitting in an office. You know, they, they should have, I don't know, they should have got some younger blood in and said, you know, right, we, we want to get to the teenagers that are listening to the pirates. Uh, and um, Luxembourg, it's a shame Luxembourg went. I did I did hear why it went. Uh, it's not transmitting anymore, is it? I, I did hear why it stopped, I can't remember. I have to find out. I keep mentioning teenagers, but of course it wasn't only teenagers that listened. Uh, I remember actually a, f a friend of mine, his brother was about 10, he had a younger brother. Whenever I went around his house, his brother, was he had a little transistor radio of his own, he'd listen to, to Caroline. Um, but people in their 20s, 30s, 40s would listen to the, the ships. It wasn't just teenagers. So that shows, surely that shows that the radio stations... It must have been pretty good to have that wide an audience, you know, from like 10 years old up to 40s or even more, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's interesting. They obviously did it about right. So I remember some people say, oh, it's all Americanized. They're just copying American radio stations. Well, I don't know whether that was true or not. If it was true, was, so what? It worked, you know, so what? People have said to me, how did you put up with the dreadful audio quality on medium wave in those days? Um, you know, the interference, the crackling, the, the whistles and stuff, you know, a nearby lightning storm and you'd hear all over medium wave on your radio, you know. Um, actually, the audio quality on medium wave back in those days was probably better than it is on medium wave these days. They had, uh, they had Optimod. That's probably, it's all computer now, all done on computer, but uh, the audio quality was excellent. Yes, there was interference. You know, the, the cracklings and bangs and, you know, stuff going on, buzzes and things. But that was part of it. If that was somehow part of the whole thing, that was radio. Uh, you're talking of teenagers, well, and older people these days, they don't, 
they've got their phones, haven't they? Their their iPads, their tablets and stuff, and their Bluetooth headphones and <laughs> whatever they got. And they've got all this stuff, so they don't actually, although, although they listen to the radio, it's not radio as it was, you know, when I was, it's not one of these, is it? It's not a good old Bush radio. <laughs> HMV, Marconi. Oh, remember that Van Morrison song, what's it, tuning into Luxembourg, Hilverson and all that. Forget what it's called now. Oh, Before the Days of Rock and Roll. Have a listen to that, yeah. The, uh, the, before, I think it was Before the Days of Rock and Roll, it was called. Van Morrison, Empty Cup. So, yes, uh, have a listen to <laughs> Wonderful Radio London 266. And uh, I'll just have a quick think, see whether there's a... Well, I say anything, I've missed out. I could ramble on for hours about the 60s. The nightclubs, oh, terrific, the nightclubs. Yeah, I remember the live bands. You've got lead guitarist and singer, bass guitarist and drums. Okay, you've got three people. You've got a couple of amps, a bass amp, a lead guitar amp, and the drummer, well, he didn't have an amp, he'd have press a microphone. There wasn't all this stuff. You see these live bands in pubs and that these days. On the floor, there's a whole host of switches and synthesized stuff. And they didn't have any of that nonsense. You didn't see Jimi Hendrix with that. I saw him at the Albert Hall. Brilliant. Yeah, he had his fuzz box and his wah-wah pedal. But all the electronics they have in front of them on the stage now, wires and switches and, oh, dear. Yes, it's, again... Live bands now in pubs and clubs sound totally different to the uh, to back in the 60s. You know, it was, I don't know, somehow again, it was real. You know, Marshall amps, none of, none of the electronics making all these weird sounds. Decent Marshall amps and speakers. Uh, yeah, happy days. I, as I say, I could waffle on for hours. I can hear you. Please don't waffle on for hours. Shut up now. <laughs> you can always turn off if you're bored. I don't know. Look at this. This is lovely. I've almost finished this one, restoring it. The thing is, with, yeah, another thing with bands these days, they, they arrive, don't they, at the pub or wherever. Loads of gear, you know. After an hour, they're still setting up, plugging in things, twang, 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 all this. Still setting up. Hour and a half goes by, no, they're still setting up. In the old days, a band would come into the pub, dump their amps, plug stuff in, guitar, yeah, tune up, twang, 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 by ear, yeah, that'll do, twang, twang, that'll do, drum up, right, and they'd start playing. Yeah, they'd start playing within like 10 minutes of walking into the pub. <laughs> Just plug the stuff in and play, or perhaps 15 minutes. Whereas now you've got to wait for an hour and a half. And uh, when they finished, you know, back then, they just unplug stuff, pack it all up, yeah, which was took a few minutes, picked up their amps and guitars and off they went. <laughs> they just cleared off. Whereas now they're still there at three in the morning. Well, not quite, but you know, you'd think they'd be still there at three in the morning loading up their cars and stuff. I don't know. Definitely did sound good, though, back in the old days. Proper Marshall amps and speak. Not these modern speakers on posts, on sticks up in the air. You know, that's no good. You want the speakers down here. And get the bass, especially the bass. <laughs> Happy days. Feel the bass through your body. Not a medium wave, of course, but um, there we are. Anyway, I hope I haven't bored you too much. Just a, a bit of a taster of what, you know, what it was like back in the 60s. Uh, what is Red Barrel? Double Diamond? Pint of DD, please. Dear me. That was, that was well, I wouldn't say it, but uh, yeah, no, it was all right. It was okay. Uh, of course, if you went to Spain, everywhere in Spain, you know, fish and chips, beans on toast. And when I went to Spain, I didn't want that. I'd get that here. I wanted to try out their food. Not fish and chips and bees on toast and what is red barrel. Happy days. Bring back the pirate stations. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.